What do we truly know about Africa, of the history of our people, of our languages and traditions, our civilizations, societies and institutions? Very little. We know very little of the rich past of our continent, especially the pre-colonial period. And what we do know, or think we know, is tainted with racial prejudice inherited from slavery, dominated by a Western perception of Africa and its cultures. Since the beginning of the independence movement, culture has been considered as a form of political instrument. Culture, in the broad sense of the term, with everything it is comprised of, like language, arts, literature, lifestyles, value systems, and traditions. Then come several texts and manifestos that recognize the primordial role cultural policies play in the economic and social development of peoples. The latest being the Charter for African Cultural Renaissance, endorsed in Khartoum, Sudan, in January 2006. This charter is made of 39 articles and 9 titles, which are diversity, identity, development, the usage of African languages and media, the role of the states in cultural development, cooperation both intra- and inter-African, and finally the African diaspora. One of its primordial goals is to diffuse African values through education. The charter thus recognizes the tremendous work undertaken by UNESCO, the General History of Africa, which has mobilized more than 230 African and international specialists in the past 30 years. Eight volume, considered as a major contribution to the knowledge of African history. The Charter recommends diffusing this book by integrating it into educational systems, but also through media, to compensate for widespread ignorance about the continent's past. This book has been translated in several languages, including three African languages. Each country should, according to the Charter, teach its languages, especially to the youngest, to ensure their rooting in their cultures. During the colonial period, thousands of archives were looted, stolen, or destroyed. Even today, illicit trafficking of cultural goods from Africa is commonplace. That is why it is necessary for each state to take measures not only to protect, but also to recover the property looted and thus restore the history of the continent, an approach that requires cooperation between African countries, but also with their diaspora. But how do we reach these goals? By working hand in hand. Governments have the power to intervene at the legislative and fiscal levels and thus provide an enabling environment for the development of the arts and the dissemination of cultures. The African Union could, as stipulated in the Charter, create Houses of Africa and thus guarantee more visibility to African artists worldwide. But this outreach would be impossible without the involvement of civil society and cultural actors, who themselves have the power to push their governments to ratify the Charter for African Cultural Renaissance. In short, through protection, training, education, and promotion, the Charter for African Cultural Renaissance aims to use the arts and culture as a political instrument at the service of African unity, but also to accelerate the social and economic progress of the countries and reduce inequalities and injustice. It is for all these reasons that it is important for all cultural operators to work together to enforce the Charter for African Cultural Renaissance. So, the ball's on our court.